Hello fellow Gaijins, welcome to the vlog. So actually I had other plans today, but I thought the weather is so nice I have to go out today, at least a little bit. And now I'm just taking a stroll around the neighborhood where I'm living in. In my opinion, one of the best things you can do if you go to Japan is just go out and explore. You know, just walk around in places you've never been to and I can assure you, you'll find interesting things. Where I'm at right now is like fi a five minute walk from my apartment and I've never been here, so... But it looks, it looks really nice. Japan in general has a lot of nature, so going somewhere where you've never been to is really good. <laughs> the place I'm at right now looks like a park or something. I'm not really sure, but I love it. Now I myself, I'm not really sure what this video is about because I have no plans at all right now. But <laughs> I guess we'll find really interesting things. Like right now I just... You know, I just walked up the street, okay, and I already found some Tori gates, which are the red gates that usually are at like Jinjas, which means uh, temples and shrines. Temple is Otera and Jinja is shrine. The difference between a shrine and a temple in Japan is the religion that is represented um, by the shrine itself or by the temple. As far as I know, usually temples are for Buddhism and sh the shrines are for Shintoism, which are the biggest religions here in Japan. By the looks of it, I just found a shrine. <laughs> out of nowhere. Like if you just walk around Japan, you find shrines, temples everywhere. This is the big Tori gate. There's usually one at the entrance. just appear out of nowhere and said hi. <laughs> I'm kind of sad that I didn't have my camera like in my hands <laughs> at that moment. I couldn't take any footage of him but it was really cute. I just walked through the Tori gates and I, I think I found the main temple. <laughs> it's really big. It's so beautiful. Oh my god. <laughs> I remember that. If you like there's like the thing where you put in your money when you pray for something and I remember that some of the temples if you put in money it, like a strange sounds come out like a, like the sound of, a, of an animal or something so actually I've been here once with my girlfriend we stumbled upon this shrine like last year in summer but I didn't know that there were like Tori gates on the side and I think I'm gonna walk around it a little more to explore it Like if you look at this thing, you would actually think that the face is on this side, but it's actually on this side. Which doesn't really make sense. <laughs> Such an interesting statue. People sometimes ask me why I like Japan so much. And the first time I was asked this, I had to think a little bit about it because I wasn't sure myself, because I've been liking it since I was like in preschool or something, or there's where it started. And then I remembered that I actually had a friend that was half Japanese. And he always used to go to Japan in summer and bring me Japanese like candies and crackers and other things like mangas. And this really captivated me because we didn't really have things like these in Switzerland at that time. So I got really interested in Japan and I wanted to learn more. As I grew up, I, I read a lot of manga. You know, I started with Naruto, which is one of my favorites, by the way. But then I went into, you know, just the culture and learning about the language and really starting with hiragana, you know, like everybody does. And I really, I really liked it. So many beautiful places around here. I'm gonna check it out. So my girlfriend and me play Pokemon Go a lot. And we came up to here because we saw some rare Pokemon, you know, on the map. And we're like, 
we gotta get those <laughs> so we stumbled across this temple like only the front side and like this part but I've never really gone like there I should have bought some water I'm so thirsty now there's some really big bugs here in Japan I kind of want to throw a pokeball at them or something <laughs> Pokemon let's catch them all da -da 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 Pokemon I feel like a weep yeah back to the story I I really started to like Japan because of that guy in high school I just got more involved with it and I started learning the language and just trying to watch anime without subtitles but it was really hard studying on your own is not easy so I definitely recommend you to go to Japan if you can and surround yourself with the language as much as you can I actually made a few videos about it I'll leave them in this corner I think <laughs> I'm not really sure where I will end up if I go down the road on this side but it looks really interesting so I think I'll just try <laughs> and I found some vending machines so I can drink something finally. The word vending machine in Japanese is called Jido Hanbaiki. It's quite a long word and it probably takes a few days to actually remember it, but it's a very useful word. People in Japan usually just call it Hanbaiki though, because it's easier to say. There's like a really interesting structure here and something that looks like a lookout point. This looks like a boat. Yeah, it's definitely a boat. <laughs> What a nice place. I love just walking around Japan and just finding such quiet and peaceful places. You know? This might be the same cat that we saw at the temple. <laughs> I'm not sure if she followed us. She might be living here though because there is like a little cup here for water. So this might be her owner's place. So cute. This is another cat by the way. Maybe it's his brother or something. Another thing I really like about Japan is that you can find parking lots, really cheap parking lots, and toilets, bathrooms, anywhere you go. So it's really practical. So really learning Japanese is not easy. I'm referring to conversational Japanese. So really the Japanese that you can use with actual Japanese people every day without really thinking too much, you know, you can just talk. It's really hard to actually learn this, especially as a Westerner, because the grammar structure is vastly different to English or German or Spanish or any other language that we have in the West. It's very different. Maybe German has some elements that are similar, but usually I think it's very hard to actually use the grammar in a way that you don't have to think about it. So when I came to Japan the first time, I was really lucky to find somebody with whom I could use Japanese every day and who would use only Japanese with me every day. All day long, you know, just, <laughs> just using it without really me understanding anything. But with time, I started to pick up patterns and words that she used almost in every second sentence, which I started to use myself, you know. I think the easiest way to actually learn a language and learn how to use it is to just do what other people do. <laughs> just <laughs> imitate natives, just take their facial expressions and their intonations and everything and just use it yourself. You will see a huge improvement in how people react to you speaking their language if you use the same mannerisms and the same expressions in different situations they use them in. For example, in Japanese you have fillers for sentences when you don't really know what you want to say or you lost track of what you were going to say. They have ano or eto, stuff like that, that you really can incorporate in your daily talking. If you say Hmm. or if you just are if you are silent it doesn't really sound Japanese so you'll sound a lot more like a foreigner so the thing I wanted to say here is actually just <laughs> there's a guy there and he's with like three cats and he's taking photos of them so, cute. so yeah, as I said, if you try to speak like a native, people will think that you have much more knowledge about their language than you actually have. You don't really need a huge pool of vocabulary. I only know around 2,000 words, which isn't too much. I could actually speak comparably well when I only knew around 1,000 words. So you don't need much more. 
I will make a guide about how I actually learned those 1000 or 2000 words because there's a website I used for this, which is free by the way, it's called Quizlet. If you want to check it out, the link is in the description. Just go to the search bar and just type in most used 1000 words Japanese and then you will probably find the set that I used for this. The words that are in this set, it's a set of flashcards by the way, <laughs> it's a flashcard app. The, the words that are in this set are really the statistically seen the most used words in Japanese. So if you know these, you will like understand like 60% of spoken language, which is a lot. Like, I'm not really sure where I am, but it looks really nice. Yeah, I don't want to get lost though. <laughs> I just found this map and the place looks pretty big. <laughs> if you want to come here yourself, I will leave the location down in the description below. It's actually really easy to find, it's just uh, right besides Ohori Coin. you can just walk like 200 meters and you'll find it. So as you can see, toilets, again. <laughs> Another example that is specific to Japanese is Aizuchi. This is the mannerism that they have when they listen to somebody. Japanese people use this to confirm that they are listening. And if you don't do this when talking to a Japanese person, and they don't really know that Westerners don't use this kind of confirmational body language <laughs> they might get a little bit confused they might think you don't listen to them or you just aren't interested but it's really important that you learn about this specific thing and try to at least do it a little bit if you can if you talk to them they will start to say yes a lot they will just say mm, 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 ah, hi, mm. it's very normal here to react to what somebody is saying and if you do this they will probably think that you understand their culture and the Japanese language a lot better so definitely look up Aizuchi. I think I never mentioned where I went to school here in Japan and the school I went to is called Genki Jax. It's right beside Hakata station here in Fukuoka and it was great. If you have the money and the time I recommend you to go to Genki Jax here in Fukuoka in Tokyo or I think they also opened a school in Kyoto now. I will also leave a link to the website in the description. This is the first talk kind of video where I just ramble on. I don't have any script or something like that, I just talk. If you like this kind of video, please let me know in the description below because I really want to know if this is something you want to hear about, you know, just my life and my experiences here in Japan. If you have any suggestions, questions or topics you want me to talk about, please let me know. This is probably gonna be an ongoing series, like me talking and rambling and walking to places I've never been to. <laughs> Not really sure what I'm gonna call it yet, but I'll find something. I'm probably just gonna call this series like talk and vlog or talk and walk maybe. <laughs> Talk and explore. I'm not sure, but I'll think about it. Toilet number three. <laughs> the thing I bought at the Jidohan Baiki before is Pokari Sweat. I'm sure you've heard of it if you watch like Chris Broad's channel or any other Japanese based channel because everybody laughs about this name. It's Pokari Sweat. I don't know. It's a really good drink though. Definitely buy it if you go to Japan. <laughs> One tip I have for you if you see stairs and there's nothing like written like private or maybe like don't go there or something, go. <laughs> Usually there are some very interesting things you find if you go upstairs in Japan. <laughs> it's from my experience anyway. There are a lot of people just chilling here and sleeping or just hanging out in the car, I'm not sure. <laughs> this is also a very common thing in Japan. People sleep in their cars after work because they're too tired to go home. I don't think this is happening here right now, but it just reminded me of it. My girlfriend sometimes really almost collapses after work because she works really long hours and then she just sleeps like until four o'clock in the morning somewhere and then goes home which isn't too healthy I think like Japan is a really nice country but working here is not the best thing you can do I think if you're a foreigner though you probably have a much easier life here than if you're Japanese but still it's not the best environment to work in an office or in any company actually because they are really harsh on their workers usually I don't know if you noticed, but I trimmed my beard today. I'm not sure how it looks, because I usually really leave it pretty long, so... Tell me, what do you think? To touch on the topic again of going to a school for Japanese here, the school I went to, Genki Jax, has a lot of different cultural events they do, or just activities you can go to, 
which are really nice. Tea ceremonies or little parties or language exchanges you can go to, which are usually with university students or high school students. I actually went to like a English club activity they have, they probably still do this, which is an English club at a local high school, like near the school, which is like five minutes walking distance from the school. And this is like once a week and everybody that is uh, signing up for this every week can go there and then you just talk with the high schoolers and just do activities with them and they have like Halloween parties and stuff like that, which is pretty fun, especially if you are rather young because they are really young, they're like 17, 18, 16, and they, they, they just fool around and stuff, you know. So if you are below 25, it's probably pretty interesting to just see high schoolers in action. But you can go there regardless of your age, of course, I'm just saying. I don't think I will find an exit around here, so I, I'll just go back to where I came from. So I went to school five times a week, four hours per day, which is quite a lot. I did this for 20 weeks. It was like $5,000 in total, just the school. Uh, and I paid extra for an apartment that they got for me, which was really nice. Like, if you come here, I recommend you to take an apartment from that the school organizes for you because it's, it's usually rather spacious and they have really clean apartments and they look that their students are in a good apartment. But if you don't have the money, you can also do a homestay. I myself did a homestay for one month and then I moved into my own apartment for the rest of the weeks that I stayed here. The homestay was really nice, but it was like 40 minutes from school. The family I stayed with was really nice. They made me breakfast in the morning and also dinner if I wanted. I would usually just pay like 500 yen or something and they made me dinner. I don't really remember how much I paid, but it wasn't too much. So if you do a language exchange, I would definitely recommend you to do this for at least like two weeks or maybe four weeks because it's worth the thing, because you, you meet a lot of people, family, friends, and they take you to places usually. If they are nice people, of course, you have to be lucky. Here in Japan, it's not that hard to be lucky and find somebody nice that will take you to places and show you around. In the school itself, I had uh, many different senseis. Like, there's not only one sensei for your, for your class, and you change classes a lot, and people also change all the time because it's not regular, like, it doesn't start somewhere and stop somewhere like normal semesters or something. You can start anytime usually. And you will be placed in a class uh, depending on your skill. You have like a 10 minute interview with a teacher and then she will decide in what class you will be placed. First I was placed in a beginner class. Uh, I started at the Genki books chapter 9 if I remember correctly. And as time went by I really studied hard so I skipped a few classes because we had a winter break. And in this winter break, I studied all the vocabulary of Genki 2. If you come here to study Japanese, study. I met a few people that didn't study too much. Like, they came here and when they went after half a year, they didn't really speak a word. Like, they spoke very basic Japanese. And I really think that if you come here, you should use the time because it's not cheap, it's really expensive. So I really think if you come here, you should use the time, meet people, go out as much as you can, as if possible, every day, every second day, go out, meet people, just have fun. And use your Japanese. Don't be afraid of people judging you or anything like that, just talk. It's definitely the best way to, to learn. Let people talk to you in Japanese. Also, don't be afraid of asking if you didn't understand what they said. It's really important to ask, so you can pick up words and mannerisms, as I said before. Now, if you don't have the time or the money to come here to study, you can, of course, study Japanese by yourself. I think using apps and Quizlets that I mentioned before is the first step. But this, You have to talk. You really have to. Talking is not easy in Japanese, especially at, this, at the beginning stages. You will, sound like, you will sound like a real noob. At the beginning, if you start out with Japanese and you start talking, it sounds so bad. Like, I cannot lie to you, it sounds really, really bad if you have a foreign accent in Japanese but I think the Japanese accent is really easy to mimic if you if you compare it to German or even English like uh, for Japanese people to learn English or pronounce English is much harder than for Western people to pronounce Japanese the only sounds they have are the vocals and consonants in front of the vocals so it's actually always the same sound it's just ah E, I, O, U, and then ka, ke, ki, ko, ku, and all the other consonants in front of the vocals, and then there is the N, which is just N, and that's almost everything. So <laughs> it's not really hard to pronounce the things correctly, you just have to learn how to do it. Like watch videos and people talking, and just try to, <laughs> to embrace that they don't have a lot of intonation in their language. So don't try to over pronounce things. 
I'm not sure if I jumped around from topic to topic too much. If I did, please let me know. But I think this kind of talking is more genuine than if I write down everything. And But if you want me to have a script and, you know, not make too many breaks and really talk coherently about a topic, I can do that too. I mean, I can also talk about the topics I talked in this video in separate videos if you want to. This is not a problem for me. I can make those. I will probably make those anyway at some point because I will, I will probably have so many more things to talk about if I think about it some more. <laughs> but I think this video summarizes the points I had in my head, like the thoughts I wanted to tell you about quite well. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. It's something else, I guess. It's not the same as I did before. If you have any further questions or something you want to add to what I said, put them in the comments. I will respond to every single one of them. I'll see you in the next one.